Howdy, if you break out, it is Miss Cash. I want to summarize one of the big takeaways from sections one, 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 two, and one, three in our curriculum. Um, and that's talking about the average rate of change and is it increasing, decreasing, and all that kind of stuff, um, et cetera. So let me, let me start with, um, I have this graph right here. Um, it's going from negative infinity to positive infinity. It has a zero here at negative four. It has a zero here at positive two, and it's bouncing. Um, there's a, um, a maximum value here. I don't know if you can, um, well, so this is, that one doesn't really matter at, for our purposes today. This is at x equals negative two. Here is our inflection point. This is at x equals zero. And here we have a minimum, a local minimum at x is equal to two. Okay, um, and so we want to talk, we talk a lot about the average rate of change and what it's doing. Um, and so we drew a table in class, and I think this can be really helpful um, when we're talking about, talking about these things. Okay, so what happens here is that we can talk about the function, what the function is doing, and then we can talk about what the average rate of change is doing. Okay, so we could say that the function is either positive or negative. We could say that the function is increasing or decreasing. We could say that, excuse me, I, I needed to have things in the way. Um, we can say that our function is concave up or it's concave down. Okay, um, and so if the function is positive or negative, all that has to do with is are we living above or below the x-axis? So we are positive from negative four um, to two, and then at two we're still, so, so with this particular function, we're positive with a soft bracket on negative four, a soft bracket on two, and then we would do a soft bracket on two, and then on two, or parentheses, on to infinity. Um, uh, that's where we're positive. We are negative um, from negative infinity to negative four. Um, but that has nothing, whether the graph is positive or negative tells us absolutely nothing about the average rate of change. I can have all sorts of scenarios where I could pick, I could pick this whole graph up, and so like, everything was was way above the x-axis and um and it doesn't change whether it's increasing decreasing concave up concave down okay so what we find though is if the graph is increasing what that tells us is that our average rate of change will be positive or if we know that the average rate of change is positive we can therefore conclude that the graph is increasing when the graph is decreasing that corresponds to the average rate of change being negative okay um, if we have, if our graph is concave up, then that corresponds to the fact that our average rate of change is increasing. If our graph is concave down, that corresponds to the fact that our average rate of change is decreasing. So it gets a little deceptive because we have, I can ask you, I can tell you that something is positive, negative, increasing, or decreasing, and you have to pay attention to what exactly I'm talking about or what the problem is talking about, right? What is AP talking about? Are they giving you information about the function or are they giving you information about the average rate of change? Because they're different things. Um, so if the average rate of change is what's decreasing, then we know that the piece of graph, uh, the graph will be concave down. Okay, so when we look here at this graph, we have, we have basically four, we have a piece here where it's increasing um, and it's concave down. Um, so it's concave down from negative infinity to zero, where this inflection point is. Um, but this first piece goes from, okay, so, um, how do I want to write this? So from negative infinity to negative two, our graph, that first piece right here, our graph is increasing. So here, F is increasing, which means that the average rate of change is positive. Our graph here is concave down on this piece. If it's concave down, that means it's decreasing. So if I tell you what's happening on the interval from negative infinity to negative two, you have to see whether or not I'm talking about the function or the average rate of change, okay? The average rate of change on this interval is, inc is positive and decreasing, but the graph itself is increasing, and, and on this whole interval to negative two, it's increasing, but it's concave down. See how those correspond? So be careful about what question they're asking. Then what does the graph do? Then it goes that we, we have something interesting happening from negative two to zero. Well here, now my graph is going down. If my graph is decreasing, that means the average rate of change is negative, but it, and it's still concave down. So this is still concave down means that it's decreasing. So from this little piece, we can say that our average rate of change is 
Okay, let me try that again. We can say our function is decreasing at a decreasing rate. We can say that our function is decreasing and it's concave down. We can say the average rate of change is negative and decreasing. Okay, the next piece that we wanna look at goes from zero to two. And from zero to two, we're still decreasing. Decreasing, our function is still decreasing, which means our average rate of change is negative. Um, but we are now on the side that's concave up. Can you see that we're concave up on this side? So this has, uh, the function is negative, excuse me, I said that wrong. See, we gotta be careful. <laughs> the average rate of change is negative and increasing. The function is decreasing and it's concave up. So decreasing and concave up would be this scenario, um, which tells us that the average rate of change is negative and increasing. The last piece from two to infinity, two to infinity, our graph is increasing. If the graph is increasing, it, actually the graph was positive on that whole interval. So, so this last piece says that our graph is, is positive, it's increasing, and it's concave up. So that tells us that the average rate of change is positive and increasing. See that, that relationship? Um, I hope this helped clarify things. I find this table to be helpful. And then, then ask yourself, what are they talking about in this problem? Are they talking about the average rate of change? Or are they talking about the function? Um, Good luck, go practice, do lots of multiple choice questions because I think that's what's gonna be challenging at this point in the year. All right, like, subscribe, comment, all the things, and I'll see you in the next video.